Hello and good afternoon, real estate professionals. Hope everyone's doing good today. Today we have a live webinar topic, sell more homes with VA loans and debunk common VA misconceptions. My name is Kurt Klaus. I hope you are all doing well, preparing for the start of the spring market. Super Bowl Sunday is upon us. Thank you, thank you for joining the webinar. We have kind of two goals in mind today. One, to help you sell more homes for sure. And two, we also want to help out and thank all of our veterans to give back, to honor them, for protecting us and our country at guaranteed rates. These are all brought to you by these webinars by the guaranteed rate companies. But one of our, our first core value actually is called Grow for Good. And yes, it's great to have success, but we think there's nothing more important or rewarding or fulfilling than, than helping others. So um, one of the points here is to help the veteran community. Number one mistake that veterans do make through the home buying process is they do not use a VA savvy agent. You know, most veterans are unaware of the benefits, which is crazy to me. The benefits are amazing, but many veterans have misconceptions about, uh, or they overestimate the minimum credit score, the sounds of the dime payment. So, you know, to really let them know that this amazing benefit is there for them. So again, today we want to make you one of those savvy agents that a veteran can work with. Two, we want to uh, you to add another kind of niche market to sell more homes, to add military referral group or network. It's a very close-knit, loyal group. So to build your referral network by adding more buyers in your area. And then three, we want to kind of debunk some myths and misconceptions. So you're more informed, so you can speak with confidence and be comfortable discussing VA products with all of your clients. So again, thank you for being with us today. These webinars usually run, you know, 30, 45 minutes. We have them monthly. They are all brought to you by guarantee rate companies, like I mentioned, specifically by our agent advantage website. So not from, know if you're new here to one of our webinars or if you're not familiar with Agent Advantage. It is agents.rate.com. We have a couple of versions for our, our different companies that we have here, but it is everything we've created in one spot for all of the agents we work with that use us and trust us. And we share, explain, and give access to all of our, our technology and our marketing. And we have coaching pieces in here. So if you haven't done so, check out agents.rate.com and that is our agent advantage website. There are no costs to agent advantage and the you know site is uh, simple. We wanna help you look good. We wanna help you look good to your clients. There are calculators and data and connections to our seamless digital mortgage experience and a loan dashboard. We wanna help you grow your business with the marketing and the coaching and the content. Again, it's all at no cost. So our webinar series, we do these monthly, we do these live, and again, we appreciate you're on the call live. Please ask your questions in the chat feature. We do these live so we can talk to agents across the country and take live questions and hear uh, exactly what you need. These are also recorded, but just like the Age Advantage website, these webinars are all about helping you and helping you with your business. So please enter your questions in that live chat feature. And Danielle, who is running the board with this webinar, will maybe squeeze in a question during the slides, but we will for sure get to all the questions at the very end. Before I introduce Paul quickly, I want to have Danielle put up a quick survey. We want to know more about you and what 
you and your business are like before we go into the VA webinar series. So if you don't mind, a couple seconds. Want to know, one, if you have ever done a VA loan, yes or no? Quick answer there, just so we know who we're talking to. And we will give the results of these at the end of the webinar as well. So please click yes or no. Have you ever closed a VA loan before? We'll gather those results. And the second quick question is, we want to know how frequently your clients ask you about doing a VA loan. So frequently, occasionally, rarely, or never. So five seconds, quick answer there. Danielle will compile the results. And again, love the feedback, love to know who our audience is, but thanks for answering those two quick questions and we'll give those answers at, at the end. So on to our guest speaker, and we are happy that Paul has joined us today. He has over 20 years in the mortgage business. He is our military liaison, who's specifically focused on helping our veterans. So this is his world, our veterans and their families. He's also director of business development here at Guaranteed Rate. He is a recovering attorney from Hawaii. And just like myself, he did not serve, but both of our fathers did. My dad was a lieutenant in the Army, and Paul is the son of a Marine. Again, this is his world with VA. He's super passionate about helping our veterans and helping their families. And he is here with us today to help you help them. And again, we are super happy that Paul is with us. I love saying his last name, Paul Alecuye. I'm sure you've had to spell that a million times, but I still enjoy saying it. So again, thank you for helping us and for sharing your experience. Paul, how are you doing? Paul Alecuye. <laughs> thank you, Kurt, for that wonderful introduction. And let me just say, as a recovering attorney, uh, typically I would speak in front of an audience of 11 jurors and alternate and a judge. So I'm really glad that we're doing this via a, a, a video audio call where I'm not seeing hundreds of people in front of me. I'm not sure I get all my words out of my mouth without stammering. Uh, but thank you for having me and for the audience out there. Thank you for tuning in. I know you have a lot of other things you could be doing right now. And yes, I, I have been in Hawaii for the majority of my life, but I was born on the East Coast. So you're going to see that as I speak. Well, you'll hear it. Uh, my my, my uh, pace may get very fast, and that's not typical of the way I would normally probably speak in Hawaii. So you can't take that that out of an East Coaster, no matter how long they've been gone. But aloha, everybody. That's what we would start every seminar, every greeting would be starting with aloha. So I bring a little sunshine to wherever you are around the country, around the world. Uh, and let's get jumping right into this first slide. Thanks for the poll, Kurt. I look forward to seeing those results. But uh, the first slide is understanding yeah. military home buyers. And let's just talk about that in a minute. First, yes. mis, mis, first misconception, guys. You see, uh, uh, if you've got vid video up on your side, it says permanent change of station, PCS. That's an acronym used in the military. First off, there is nothing permanent about it, okay? It is temporary change of station. It can occur every two to three years. And put it into context for you. If any of you have family and you put your child in school at K-1 and they graduate at 12th grade, a typical military family who has that Occurrence will have moved their children three to seven times during that period of their high school to the time they graduate high school. The reason that's important is you need to understand the military. You need to understand the military home buyer. Uh, realtors and lenders and everybody in the community don't necessarily appreciate that if they're not in a military community, but the military move around the country significantly. Um, and so what I look at is, first off, understanding the language. So PCSing is one of those things. Okay, permanent change of station. Also knowing their, their military occupation, because that affects some of these uh, our veterans, active duty, will move every year, depending on their military occupational specialty, their MOS. So if they're really highly specialized, they can be moving every single year. I personally know people who have moved 13 times in a 12-year high school career. So it's, it's a passion that I have to make sure that we take care of our military. And, and when we talk about that, let's, let's make sure we educate ourselves about the language so we're not speaking in a way that's inappropriate to the military. 
and we can move on to the next slide because I think we'll, we'll we'll try to move through this quickly to leave time for some questions. Yeah, um, this is why we're here to have you you know their their persona and when you showed me this presentation initially these next two slides really surprised at the the percentages and the number of, of homeowners we have military versus um, everybody else. Yeah. So uh, uh, if you look at this, 67% of American adults are homeowners. Let's contrast that to the veterans, okay? Um, first off, I think in understanding 67% of Americans, that's an American dream, correct? I mean, we all look to, to want to own something that we can live in, and we can be stable in, and we can maybe grow equity in. But our military, for example, 78% um, of veterans, and let's describe veterans so I understand the veteran concept. Veteran is anybody who's active duty, has served, retired, uh, and it could be in the guard or reserve. So that term is broadly used. Everybody sometimes thinks veteran means that they're just in the military right now or they got out already. So it's our active duty, it's our reserve components, which would be Air or National Guard, uh, as well as our um, Coast Guard. That's all part of our veteran community. But if 78% of them were homeowners, that's 14% higher than the total population. And the question has to be asked is why? Well, if they have a military career, whether it spans two years, four years, or 20 years or more, and they've moved around several times, no matter how short their career is, one of the things they want is they want roots on the ground. They want to be stable for their family. So they tend to be very, very entrenched in buying a piece of property and living in it. But let's contrast that to the active duty military, our Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, Marines, uh, who are moving about. Only 43% of them are currently homeowners. And the question always comes up is why is that? And I'm gonna use one, uh, one point throughout this whole presentation, advocacy and education. Those two things. If we don't have an advocacy for our veterans, then we are not putting them forward into the communities of homeownership because we're not advocating for them. Not that we're not trying to, but we need to be better advocates. And the way you're better advocates is knowing their story. It's really a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your, with your buyer, is know their story and be able to portray that story to the selling agent or the seller themselves. And so when you do that, I think those percentages will come up over time. That's part of why I thank you Guaranteed Rate for putting this out there to allow education and to allow me to give passion into the advocacy portion. So that's one of the things I would be, I'll be talking about. So yeah, we look at that with, with people transferring, you know, as far as active duty, moving moving around more. So for sure, lower than uh, the typical vet. Yeah. So when we talk about advocacy and we talk about the PCS moving about, there's some statistics on your screen, and I, I'm not, I don't like to do PowerPoints by death. But if you look at this, this is just 10 market areas. And let me give you a quick example of where somebody might be in the military and go, how can I leverage this to have a a better footprint for myself as a realtor in the military marketplace. Well, let's see if an Army person starts in Georgia at Fort Benning, and then they rotate in two to three, four years later from there to Colorado Springs. And then from Colorado Springs, they head to Hawaii, which they love that after being in Colorado. And then from there, they head back to North Carolina. They may have moved four times in eight to 10 years, but putting down roots there is important to them. And especially when you look at what's happening in the military, in our military bases, whether it be Army and Navy or, you know, Air Force, 65% of our military live off base housing. 65%. There's a marketplace. If you do 65% of this population you see on the screen, yep. that's a lot of military in the marketplace. Looking here, we got a, an early question. Look, viewing these stats, Paul, who is eligible for a VA loan benefits and what is needed for them to prove eligibility? And the second part is, are there minimum requirements to qualify? Talk about wow. you know, eligibility and qualifies. That's a great question. Uh, basically, uh, and, and I'll leave this to obviously the knowledgeable lenders because there's, they're required to have a certificate of eligibility or if they're in the Guard and Reserve, they have their point status. So they have to be, if they've served honorably, an honorable discharge is sometimes less than Okay. they're eligible if they're a veteran of any nature. If they're active duty and they're in the active duty military, they're automatically eligible. If they're in the guard or reserve, if they've been on orders that said they've been deployed, they're automatically eligible. 
if they're in the guard or in reserve and they've been on just that weekend duty in two weeks a year, their eligibility is based upon the number of years they've been in the guard and reserve. All that can be determined by a knowledgeable lender who can pull their certificate of eligibility and determine their eligibility status. Uh, the second part of that question was, what are the criteria of, of qualifications? Each lender sets overlays. The Veterans uh, Affairs Administration is merely the guarantor of the VA loan program. Every lender guaranteed rate will set parameters of what the qualification status is for whether it be credit score, et cetera. It's income driven. It's not, um, the VA has no credit score requirement. So it is a, a lender requirement. Okay? And I don't think there's a lender in the country that doesn't ask for credit. Did I miss a part of the second part of the question? No, that was there. Sure. Somehow I knew you'd know the answer to that. I was okay. scraping around for info on this. I went to the VA.gov website and there yeah. it even had a, a link for benefits in the actual items of that certificate of eligibility. If anyone right. had his having conversations with their, their clients and want to know if it's there, so I, is that a, a good place to check out as well? Yeah, when we talked to our veterans, the first question we, we, we we propose to them is when you're talking to your lender, ask them if they even know what a certificate of eligibility is. A knowledgeable lender and a lender that's doing a significant volume and understanding the VA benefit will actually be able to pull that certificate of eligibility for you so the veteran doesn't have to go through the VA portal, go look for it and find out where it is and click through a bunch of buttons. That's something yeah. as a knowledgeable lender, what they will do for you. If your lender looks at you perplexed, probably not somebody you want to be sitting down through that whole pro complex process with if they can't even figure out how to do that got it good to know perfect all right so with, let me just get, catch up with you here kurt thank you so when i look at the marketplace in those areas and how can you leverage for example somebody going from georgia to colorado to colorado to hawaii hawaii back to north carolina in every transaction first off you know it's, it's loyalty knowing and trusting what people uh, do in general. It could be in marketing, it could be in real estate, it could be in any venture. But when we're really talking about um, real estate and how you leverage that, I look at transactions and I look at, and I've been in the industry for a while, for every person you assist, there's a minimum of five more referrals that could come from that. You have your escrow and title officer, you have your appraiser, if you do a good job, he's going to say, hey, they were really nice to work with. We have your buyer, your seller agents, and you have your lender. But in the military, it goes a little bit deeper. Within the military, if you think about 65% living off post and off base or installations, and of course they have their little open house after you've closed a successful transaction for them, they're inviting their unit over, their brigade, some of the brigade commanders, maybe their battalion. They're inviting other people of different ranks over to their house. Uh, maybe their subordinates, occasionally uh, somebody of a higher rank might come by their place. And they're certainly gonna be impressed by the fact that they had a good experience with a seller, a good experience with the agents on both sides, and that spreads like wildfire through the military. Once they trust you and, and, and really know that you know your thing, they will be a best referral source that you'll ever have. I've been in the industry for over 20 years, and, and my whole career was not working with just the military. I started out as a lawyer, as I said, then in, in the banking world, and I have not seen more loyalty than there is through the military. Now flip yeah. that over. If it's not a good experience, they're, they're going to get the same thing. So let's do this right. Let's understand our military, understand, be passionate about them. Go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, now every realtor knows the, the power of a group or a network or a community or a school, but I think an understatement by saying that the military is an extremely loyal segment, but you know, very different and a great way to kind of grow that sphere and get the referrals and you know close close-knit uh, community of our population and education you mentioned this paul super important yeah advocacy and education so i look at advocacy as the part of the realtor but i also look at education as part of a realtor's responsibility educating themselves so that they understand the veteran and so when we see why do less than 15% of our veterans of 18 million or more veterans utilize the VA home loan benefit? Well, there's multiple factors, obviously. They didn't know about it. Uh, that's part of the role that Guaranteed Rate is doing for their part to service our veterans, is they're educating our veterans. Much like this webinar you're doing here, uh, I know they're doing webinars for the, for the veteran themselves so they can understand the benefit. It's not a complex benefit, it's just that it's one that's not understood because here's the thing, the Veterans Administration 
we're all familiar with all the talk about the VA hospitals around the country. The Veterans Administration just never does. They never send a veteran, active duty, retired, guard, reservist, notification of a change in the VA home loan benefit that they had available to them. Years ago, you could only use it once. Now you can use it multiple times. You can have multiple homes as a veteran under the VA. So the Vet Veterans Administration doesn't notify the veteran of these changes in benefits. Partly has to be done through lender education, can also be done through realtor education. And that's really what's important about this webinar that you're doing. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, and that was a head scratch to me, seeing that less than 15%, it does, you know, it's, um, you know, uh, you know, I don't get it amazing to me, but sometimes it's as simple as just asking, having that part of your script, your presentation. I know in our digital mortgage process, it was one simple question we added, which is, is are you a current or former member of the U.S. military? And I think, you know, not just on the lending side, but for all of our the, the real estate agents, just to, you know, make sure that they are aware. Yeah, mind-boggling that it is not uh, the benefit is so strong, and that it's not taken advantage of more. Yeah, yeah. that's a great point, Kurt. Before you, before we get to this first fact, efficient is is as a realtor, whoever your borrower is, um, when they come in, and you, it's okay that you come in and say, "Hey, are you a veteran?" And just because uh, we're so accustomed to seeing veterans with high, what they call high and tight. Their sh hair short on the side, a little bit yeah, on the top, yeah. right? Yeah. That's the military language. We're talking about understanding a little bit of language, high and tight. That's their haircut. Well, there are many veterans uh, who are now out of the service, act no longer active duty, who are not going to wear the high and tight. They, they change that mode. So you don't know. And, and veterans sometimes don't even know that they had that benefit. And so ask them, hey, I see you've served. Or I know you've served. Uh, have you used your VA home loan benefit? If they say yes, now you have a little knowledge to help them. Uh, and one, whether you're connecting them up with a referral to a knowledgeable lender, or you're at least giving them some basic understanding of all well, the VA benefits available to you, because I know you served two to four years, or you're an active duty, or you're guard reserve. Let's look at that. It might be a great option for you. So I ask them. And uh, okay, Kurt. For sure. The next slide. For sure, SM. So now we are going to, so you are comfortable with those common questions that may be asked to you, is we're going to roll through eight questions on myths and facts that you all should know about VA loans. So I will read these questions and in your mind, fact or fiction, and Paul will give his, his follow-up answers. So first topic, borrowers are not as qualified if they are doing zero down, if they get 100% financing compared to a conventional buyer with a down payment, fact or fiction, Paul? Well, this is interesting because I, I sit in many conversations with realtors at times and they're going through the deliberation process of looking at contracts to accept or not accept. And for some reason there's this misconception, so it's fiction, that somebody who has not putting any money down is less qualified than somebody who's putting 10, 20, 30 percent down. They think it's a stronger contract. It's quite the opposite, quite honestly. The uh, guidelines for a VA loan uh, are very different than a conventional loan, but are very much tailored towards a very good income analysis. And that person not putting any money down, it's just part of the benefit that they earned. So the 100% not 100% financing, if you understand the VA administration's intent here, was to put our veterans in homes for the country they defended. So the Veterans Administration guarantees 25% of that 100% financing. So it is a stronger loan in the marketplace. It's a stronger loan all around. And the veterans have to go through a very rigorous um, analysis of their income, their qualifications before they get approved. So it's actually a very strong offer if it comes in from a veteran. The difficulty is that we have this myth for the, going back for a number of years that while well, 0% down means they don't have any money, they're not qualified. Not necessarily true. We have many. In fact, the average in, median income of a veteran, an active uh, veteran, is about 10% higher than the median income of a, of a civilian uh, in the male and female uh, categories. So their income levels on the median are higher than the average non-military person. 
So people think the more you put down, the more qualified, but not the case here. Correct. Perfect. Factor fiction, sellers must carry or pay Bowers lending and or other crazy closing costs. Factor fiction, Paul. Well, I'm sure a lot of agents out there are going, I'm not paying any of these crazy closing costs, therefore I'm not accepting a veteran's contract or a, a, a person who served in the military, because that's another misconception. That's that's just a total fiction. The, the VA uh, requirements for 100% financing doesn't mean there are no closing costs to a veteran, but it does mean that closing costs, just like any contract, conventional, FHA, whatever, are negotiable and I'll try to take my legal hat off here. They are negotiable. It's merely a contract. Whatever is in the contract can be negotiable. So the closing costs, and here's where passion comes in. If given a choice between a veteran and a non-veteran and as a agent or a lender who can pay some of those closing costs, whether it be $100, $500, if that helps them get into a home that they've defended this country so that we have the advantage of working in an environment that allows us to make a pretty darn, darn good living. Sometimes that can be negotiated in and the lender can pay it, the agents can pay it, the seller can pay it, or the borrower pays it. So it's truly fiction. You can do whatever you desire within the RESPA requirements, within lending and ethical boundaries of real, real estate as well. Well said, that leads us to the next question. Sellers and buyers can, negotiate just like any purchase contract on seller's credits etc no mandatory fees or costs by the seller yeah I, I threw this one in here so that you know people look at like oh i feel like i'm taking a test here everybody should have got this right because i gave you the yeah. answer just before yeah. i answered it <laughs> yeah, yeah. so 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 yeah it, it is truly up to the to the to the contractual arrangements made at the time of the uh, purchase contract going in or subsequent negotiation yeah great point made point made yeah Appraisers and appraisals are harder in the VA world. This is a great one. And this one is one that I think appraisals are hard in probably any world. So it's not really a trick question. There, there's always a difficulty in appraisals. I don't think I've been in the industry 20 years where there isn't a little hiccup somewhere in the appraisal process. But when you're talking about a veteran and a VA loan, the Veterans Administration only says one thing. The appraisals are all selected by the VA through a VA portal administrated by them. So there is no cherry picking your appraisers or in the old days where you got an appraisal to go out and say, oh, I want this value and stick it in there. So first off, the appraisers are picked by the VA. So this is a fiction um, that appraisals are hard. In fact, they are actually better for the transaction than maybe otherwise. So the VA picks the appraiser, the appraiser goes out. The appraisal then, is conducted in any other manner like any other appraisal. Here they go and they inspect the property, they come back with an inspection report. I don't know if the next question may cover yep. part of this. Same thing, yep. Okay. They're controlled by rules and regs of the industry. The only criteria that is paramount is home is safe, it's habitable, and it's up to code. Value is based on supply and demand. The appraiser, like you said, does not add or subtract value based on the buyer being a veteran. So when you look at this, this basically means that here's where issues come up in the fiction about appraisals. An appraisal for a veteran in a VA home appraisal, if there's no carpet in the, in the house and the front door is missing or a window is broken, maybe in some appraisals, they'll just note it and the loan will go through and they say, we'll fix this after, we'll give a credit for putting carpet in or we'll do you know, a credit for the door repair. The VA is saying, we want our homes to be safe for our veterans and habitable and up to building code. So if there's no carpet and you wouldn't let your kid crawl around on that floor because the carpet is threadbare or you know uh, just terrible condition, health and safety, it has to be of average standard and it has to have all the basics. If there's no handrail going up to the steps, it's not gonna pass that, that test, okay? So it's gonna have to be fixed or repaired prior to uh, the closing at the seller's cost. Okay. So that's yeah. where the problems become with appraisals is we're looking out for a habitable home, a safe and habitable home, not one that, oh, we'll give you credit to put in new carpets or we'll give you credit. I mean, because there is no carpet, we'll give you credit to put a front door on. So that is something that you need to let your sellers and, and 
know if they're going to market their home and they want to take advantage of veterans who uh, they want to put in a home, that they have a house that's habitable. Industry standards. Here's the biggie. ABA loan takes longer to close. Well, I'll leave it to the experts to say, but uh, my experience <laughs> that in, in 20 years, a VA loan takes no longer, so I think it's fiction, than any other loan. The length of time to close a loan should be commensurate with the knowledge of the lender and the realtor working the transaction and the process of the appraisal coming in. And this, let me back up a little on the appraisal. So an instance of the appraisal is actually helping in the veteran world where it doesn't help in the conventional world is under the VA, if an appraiser gets the assignment and the appraisal is gonna come in under value of the home that's listed, which right now I know we're in a very hot market and getting places to come in under value is not the problem in a lot of markets around the country right now. In fact, there are offers going in in, in excess of the, the asking price from what I'm hearing. But if it's going to come in under the appraisal under the VA guidelines, must notify the parties to the transaction that the appraisal will likely come in under the value provided for the contract. This gives all parties a chance to negotiate or renegotiate up front before waiting to find out three weeks into it, the appraisal comes back and it's underwater. You know, it's under it's undervalued and now you're scurrying. So it's a thing that the VA is putting in again to protect our veterans, to get them the best um, possible home at the right price. Process and timing of the VA loan is controlled by the lender and not the VA industry volume. Each lender's timing is the only variable here. Yeah. Um, Everybody has an auntie or an uncle or somebody who's in the banking world that says, we can do this, we can do that, we can get it done in 10 days. And look, reality is, is both interest rates are variable, but very close in around the marketplace. I think guarantee rate obviously is a phenomenal company, but the time to, to close a deal is strictly controlled by the parties to the transaction. And here's where I would make emphasis on the advocacy and education piece. If you as a realtor are not knowledgeable about a VA loan and you're trying to do one, you may be slowing up the process. So I'm so happy to see the number of people that are getting educated here. And then the second part of that is advocating for that veteran. That will move the process along much faster when you have a passion for your client and you understand their family circumstances. They've moved 12 times in 20 years. They just want to have some solid ground underneath their feet. They want their children or whatever, to be able to go to the same school for the next three to five years. So those passions translate into closing deals faster. If you're looking at it just as another number, another another way to you know close a deal, sometimes it gets just lost in the shuffle of all the other transactions you're doing. And I think if you have that passion and you educate yourself and you're willing to learn about that veteran and tell their story, whether they've been deployed six times, this is their first time back on American soil, they're gonna put down roots, their grandmother lives in the neighborhood, sell that story as a buying agent to the seller's agent and and or to the seller and in my own personal experience when i sold my home in hawaii i took five thousand dollars less less than i could have because the veteran that was buying my home was a single parent with two kids who had lost a spouse and this was the perfect home for them and that passion came through from the agent who approached me to sell my home when i was selling my home so Understand that and that'll speed the process along. So it's totally, totally uh, up to the lender and the parties involved to make the transaction smooth. Good stuff, Paul. Uh, one more the agent should know about VA loans are an assumable loan. When market rates tick up and the veteran wants to sell their homes more marketable for the real estate agent, both on the buy and sell side, it also provides the agent the opportunity to further market and help another veteran obtain their American dream? Well, that's a long question. I don't know what lawyer wrote that one. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. but that is definitely a fact. In fact, the VA loan is the only assumable loan currently on the market. And what assumability means is that under certain circumstances, a veteran, another civilian, can assume that veteran's loan. So if they're in the market, they buy the home today and they want to sell it three years from now, and their interest rate today is whatever it might be, let's just pay, say 3%. But in five years from now, they want to sell the home and the interest rates are 7%. They can market and sell that home at the 3% interest rate, which makes their home much more marketable because who would not 
want to have a 3% rate versus the market rate 7%. So they can market that and sell that to another veteran or to a civilian. So if you represented that buyer when they bought the home and now you're trying to sell the home five years later, if they choose to sell, you have a more marketable property. And, and so that's one of the great benefits of the VA home. And you can market it to the veteran community and put another veteran in a home. You can market it to the civilian community. So when you talk about referral business or residual business or passive business from representing an entity, the VA and the veteran is the only assumable loan and it gives you a path towards repeat business if and when the veteran decides to sell that home. Great, all good, uh, you know, eight, eight good questions there. More uh, knowledge when those questions come up to a realtor when you're out there. Um, marketing to the military. Yeah, this is, you know, I'm not the marketing expert. Uh, we have great people at our company that help, will help you. And I saw the Agent Advantage, what a great tool uh, Kurt, your team has for them. That's an incredible way to help them market. But I go back to the two, two premises, right? Advocacy and education. If you're passionate about something, you do much better. If you're passionate about cooking, you, you do a great presentation for guests that come to your, your house. If you can advocate advocate for your veteran when you're out in the community uh, to other realtors uh, and you've been educating yourself about what it takes for a veteran to serve in our military or when they've gotten out, uh, I think you're going to find that there's more than enough business for you and that will spread quickly. So be passionate be a good advocate for our military uh, they will refer you business they know the difference too if you're doing it just because you need another commission or another paycheck they are very very intuitive i think people in general are intuitive uh, but they will spread the word about your passion for the military uh, so some of the things i recommend in, in over my career and as kurt mentioned neither he nor i uh, have a military background and i got into this quite by accident from my legal career into the, even when I entered the banking world, but it was finding a passion for our veterans and then finding out as much as I could to educate myself, to go and join local organizations, to get certifications in the field. I believe around the country, there's many certifications, military relocation specialists that you can get through your local uh, board of realtors. Uh, I recommend doing it for no other reason other than A, it educates you. B, it gives you some understanding of the military and language that they might use. And then you speak the language, it's a little easier to communicate, a little easier to communicate, easier to close the transaction. Uh, some of the things that I think are very important to the military is they know that you are passionate about them because they see you or they know of your organization, whether it be through sponsorships or whether it be through your actual participation. There are many good organizations out there. Uh, I know Guaranteed Rate is in partnership with the USO, the 80th anniversary just coming up this month. Uh, one of the world's most recognizable brand sig signatures for the military. Uh, there's many ways to get involved with USO. Contact guarantee rate will help you. Um, there's other organizations, Association of the United States Army, if you if you have an army base near you and you want to be involved, the Navy League Association. All those are available. You can reach out to Kurt's team and it can get you links so you can search them. Uh, National Guard Association, Coast Guard Foundation, Guard and Reserve Associations vet them and find your passion to help them however you can it could be a hundred dollars it could be thousand dollars it could be just your time talent or your treasure one of those three uh, will get you uh, far greater returns in my in my estimation and having done this for over a decade than basically just um, putting on a billboard ad uh, you get into their community you, sh you show them that you care they will make a big difference in your life yeah and there are local organizations big and small in every state and corner of the country exactly and i'll give you a good example there's not a military base per se in pennsylvania like you would think of where you have the naval base in north of virginia or the army base in you know in georgia but pennsylvania has more veterans than any other state combined uh and their veteran population has the guard reserve and, and some active duty that moved through there uh, and but so there are a lot of military organizations in towns and states and counties around the country that you and I don't always think that they'd be there. So yeah, just dig a little deeper. Yeah, I took a quick census search and Illinois is one of the smallest percentages of veterans, but there was over a half a million veterans mm -hmm. living in the state currently. So amazing. Yes, sir. 
Yes, so sir. your que your questions, uh, Danielle, are we able to show the quick survey results from the beginning of the webinar? Yes, absolutely. Here's our first one. Oh, Very wow. cool. Yes, interesting. Close to be long before. So I hope at the end of this year, where our percentage is you know 40 that a hundred percent of you will be able to say that you have closed a VA loan by the end of the year so but yeah in interesting that, that's a that's a great response there and thank you for those of you that have served our veterans and for those of you that are attending to get the information who have not yet like Kurt said um, maybe they do a poll you know six months from now and you say you learned one or two things enough to help you close uh, a transaction come back and say that you know i'd say thank you very much in advance here's our second mm -hmm. poll so as far as clients bringing this up with you on their side it is occasionally rarely i guess so um you know if it's rarely or never and it's a simple question or ask on your side to help those that 85% of the veterans that are not taking advantage of this awesome benefit to get a couple of those people and help a couple of those those veterans. So great, 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 great. Yeah, that's then, that's an incredible stat there too, Kurt. When you, it does mirror the percentage that have used the benefit. It was only 15% are asking because they probably have used it. Now the 85, 86% have not asked. So now it's incumbent, I think, for realtors to just ask the question, hey, have you thought about it or have you used your benefit? Are you a veteran? And let's move those statistics out of the never column to where it's, you know, 86 the other way. No downside to asking that question. That's right. Uh, I got a couple of questions in my chat. Then I'll ask Danielle if she has any. Paul, here is a great one. Is a VA loan always the best mortgage for my clients who are veterans? Answer for that is no. It just like anything, you must let them make their own independent financial analysis. We don't steer them towards a VA loan. We make products available to them that's available in their you know, eligibility status, but not always. Every circumstance is different. Um, again, those are conversations that the knowledgeable lender will have with them because as a knowledgeable lender, our, our role of the lender is not to put them in just a VA loan because they're eligible, it's to put them in the best product for the circumstances they find at that time. Give them options. Perfect. Well said. Uh, another question, does the home purchase need to be occupied by the buyer? You said in some cases they are rented out if that uh, veteran or military Shoulders transferred, and then does the home need to be per need to be occupied by the buyer? And can you have more than one VA loan? Yeah, good question. So, in breaking that up, the VA home loan, if they're going to utilize the VA home loan benefit, it's for owner occupancy purchase of a sing uh, a, 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 a primary residence. The intent at the time of purchase is a primary residence owner occupied. Yes. We know our veterans move, so two years into it, they need to move. They maintain that residence if they choose to. They can rent it out. They can use their benefit in another location for another VA loan and utilize the rental income that they're obtaining on that other property as a qualification status. So I have veterans that own multiple homes in multiple states because they've moved over their career. I have one veteran that owns 10 homes uh, wow. using his VA, VA home loan benefit. So it is a benefit that's for your primary residence when you purchase the home. It's not for investment properties when you're looking around. It's not for like buying raw land and in most instances you're gonna build a home. It's for your primary residence while you are uh, closing the loan, getting into the property. Great, great, great. Anything else, Danielle, that came in over the chat during the webinar? Yes, we have lots of questions coming through. Our first one is, how does unpaid student loan affect a vet? Good one. The VA will loan, and I'll leave this to the loan officers because again, unpaid, it's a kind of a large category. I mean, they still have debt on the credit report. The VA loan is analyzed through an income qualification. There's a residual income 
that's required to be met to qualify for, for the home, unlike a conventional loan, which does not use a residual calculator. So it really is just a debt like any other debt. Um, and, and that is something that's just analyzed through the credit uh, and the lender's requirements for what's the credit score and what the income requirements are by the VA. So it's simply an analysis. It doesn't matter what kind of debt they have as long as they qualify. Good. Another one come in. Can you buy a multi-family home with a VA loan? Yes, you can. As long as, for example, if it's a duplex, and, and you know, in Hawaii we have multiple types of housing. We have some duplexes and we have some uh, fourplexes. So yes, if you intend to occupy as the requirement of a loan, a pr primary residence, you could have a duplex where you live in one and the other one out, and that's all part of the VA allows that. Similarly with a fourplex, you live in one rent three out. Uh, beyond that, no, you can't go buy an apartment building of 12 units. Thank you, any others, Danielle? Uh, yes, yeah, so this one's kind of a scenario here. Um, I recently had an offer rejected because the seller was only accepting cash or conventional loans because a deal fell through with a previous buyer using an FHA loan. This particular property has a water well to drain field that is 66 feet and the requirement was 70 feet. So the question is, does the v, do VA loans also have these strict requirements? Um, good question. Kind of a, one of those legal entanglement questions. But you know, let me give you a, a, an analogy that might help. In Hawaii, for example, we have lava from the volcanoes and their and the homes built in a lava flow zone area. Those are controlled by the lender and the insurers of the loans, right? We're not going to lend on a place where it might be in lava or overflow with lava and treatment, or where they're using um, non-city uh, water, for example. They're using uh, systems like water catchments. So again, the VA's guidelines have to do with health and safety and requirements, and then you have all your county overlays and you have state overlays for you know building codes. So really, it is not something the VA gets involved in. That's a lender specific thing. Now, FHA may have restrictions. VA strictly talks to the um, health and safety issues. And if a property is a condominium, and, and when I say condominium, like uh, when we're talking about a, ver you know, a vertical, right, um, high rise building, then the VA has to say that that's on our approved list for our veterans to be in that condominium. That's usually the requirement. But that specific question about 67 feet, 70 feet, I would have to defer. Uh, but that's something that if that person wants to send me a link, I can get that answer from the VA. All right, you wanna do one more, Danielle? Yes, um, so this one says, many agents say there is a lack of VA appraisers. Uh, subsequently, they take around 45 days to close. Do you think 45 days is standard closing time for VA loans? No, well, that's a good question. There's a lack of, in this current environment, there's a lack of probably everything in the lending and banking institution for the amount of volume that's going through. Uh, the VA has a requirement that the VA appraisal must be concluded con completed within two weeks unless there's an extenuating circumstance or a request by the appraiser. And that's really all market conditions, uh, whether there's a, a lack of uh, VA certified appraisers in your region is really a VA issue. Uh, but I have not experienced it being any longer or any shorter than a traditional conventional FHA, non-government uh, non VA uh, time. The appraisers are not um, working for the VA, they're in your local community. They just go through more of a rigorous um, VA certification. And obviously, if you have VA appraisers, if you have appraisers in your area that are looking for more business, have them contact a local VA. I'm sure they can go through that process and get certified to do VA appraisals. Great. Another ad. Do you need to pay the M the M mortgage insurance on a VA loan with less than 20% down? Now that's another great feature, and we do a side-by-side -side analysis for our for clients. Uh, obviously, when somebody asked earlier, do you always recommend the VA loan? The VA does not have any mortgage insurance on any of their loan programs. Um, they are 100% without mortgage insurance, and so therefore they're not paying those mortgage insurance premiums for 10 to 11 years on the life of a loan. The VA does recapture 
and allow the program to continue on what they call funding fees that are charged to the borrower, depending on their status within the military. Many times they're exempt because of disability and so forth. So there is no mortgage insurance on a VA loan. In a side-by-side -side analysis, apples to apples, uh, in the long run, it's a better product for them, uh, cash, cash out of pocket usually. And I say everything usually because again, every circumstance is different. It has to be looked at by the lender to make sure they're getting the right product for the right person. Thanks. Is guarantee rates still waiving the lender fees on our VA loans? Well, that's somebody hopefully that means they've done a loan with us and thank you for that. And yes, we are. Uh, we are waiving the lender fees. Good stuff. And one more, this isn't for a, a buyer, but maybe for one of your clients to know, can I refinance my VA loan? Are there prepayment penalties for that? That's a great question. We, we get a lot of these questions in our veteran seminars, webinars. Yes, you can refinance. In fact, it's probably the, the simplest refinance that a person will do because they don't, they don't do an appraisal. They don't check the income over. They just verify you're still employed. It's called a, a IRRRL, interest rate reduction because uh, loan. So it is something that a veteran can do. They, if they can go from a VA loan back into a refinance of a VA loan very, very simply and streamless, uh, seamlessly. Um, and we also can take a, somebody who has a conventional loan and put them into the VA loan uh, after they've actually bought a home on a conventional basis. Perfect. Nick, it could not have gone any better. Thank you for your expertise and your passion and all the data and good stuff. I so, so appreciate you joining us and thank you for your time. Well, to Kurt, Nick, Danielle, Sarah, the team back there, you did great. Thank you for having me on. Uh, um, anything we can do for our veterans, uh, reach out to your guaranteed rate, local community branch or phone officer and just put out a helping hand and you'll find that you'll get many, many more handshakes back. Great stuff. Great stuff, Paul. And to everyone on the call, thank you for joining us. And to let you know that we will continue this series and with Agent Advantage and all we do to continue and add ways to make this a forum of our real estate agents that we, we know and trust. I think that Danielle has one more quick question while I talk about our next upcoming one webinar. We would love, and we love the feedback from you. We love to know what you need more of or what you would like to see more of. So another quick poll here before we sign off, what topics do you would you like to see in future webinars that we do? Is it technology, social media, events, um, managing your business or more about the specific loan products? So add your answer there. And then I wanna share that our next webinar, we have got Shauna Gleason to commit for our March webinar and Shauna, is will come in and speak on brand building and influencer marketing. She is a, a social media expert on content strategy, new with the company. She was uh, previously with, with Forbes. So look for the um, invite for our March webinar with Shauna. We'll talk about, we're still putting it together, but maybe how to create your own video listings. And Shauna will come in and give you ways that you can share and specific content strategy. So uh, looking forward to that one. And on behalf of Paul and Danielle and everyone on the Agent Advantage team, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's up on invites for future webinars and we'd love to hear from you. If you have any feedback or comments or questions or input, please email us agents at rate.com. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Aloha.